Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Robotics and Mechatronics Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to compute the magnitude and phase functions of a transfer function. And here is our problem. Compute the magnitude and phase functions of a transfer function given over here. But before we solve this particular problem, let us first briefly revise the concepts of magnitude and phase functions of a transfer function. To define magnitude and phase functions, we first need to define sinusoidal transfer function. The sinusoidal transfer function is obtained from our original transfer function by replacing s by j omega. That is, s is equal to j omega, where j is the imaginary unit, that is, j is equal to square root of minus 1, and omega is the radial frequency that's equal to 2 pi over t. Over here, t is the period of the input sign signal that, that's being sent to our system, and I will talk more about this later on. By replacing s by j omega, we arrive at the sinusoidal transfer function. That is, w of j omega is equal to j omega plus 5 over j omega plus 10. This sinusoidal transfer function is a complex number. This is because in the numerator, we have a complex number, and in the denominator, we also have a complex number. If we divide two complex numbers, we also obtain a complex number. And this complex number can be written in the polar form. That is, it can be written like this. It can be written as a function m of the radial frequency multiplying e to the power j phi as a function of omega. In this representation, m of omega is the magnitude function and phi of omega is the phase function. So the problem of computing the magnitude and phase functions boils down to the problem of computing the polar form of the R sinusoidal transfer function. Over here, you can see the physical interpretation of the magnitude and phase functions. This block diagram represents our physical system. We assume that our system is asymptotically stable. The input to the system is a sinusoid signal with the amplitude of AU and with the angular frequency of omega. The output of the system is again a sinusoid signal with the amplitude of Ay with the same frequency as the input signal and with the phase delay or the phase shift of phi of omega. From here we can see that our system is actually filtering the input signal. It takes a sinusoid as an input and it produces a sinusoid as an output. It changes the amplitude and it changes the phase of the input signal to produce the output signal. Over here you can see the time behavior of the input signal and the output signal. The input signal is represented by this blue line and the output signal is represented by this red line. The amplitude of the input signal is AU and the amplitude of the output signal is a y. We can see that the frequencies are the same, however we can see that the amplitude is changed, that is the amplitude of the output signal in the general case is not equal to the amplitude of the input signal. And furthermore we have some phase delay and this delay on this diagram is simply denoted by the shift of one, imp of one sinusoid with respect to another one. It can be shown that the magnitude function is the amplitude ratio of the output sinusoid to the input sinusoid. 
and the magnitude function is a function of frequency. That is a different frequencies. We have different ratio of the output sinusoid to the input sinusoid amplitudes. On the other hand, the phase function is the phase shift or delay of the output sinusoid with respect to the input sinusoid. And that's the interpretation of our two functions. Okay, let's now go back to the original problem. Here it is. Our goal is to compute the magnitude and the phase functions of this transfer function. S plus 5 over S plus 10. The first step is to compute the sinusoid transfer function. To do that, we replace S by J omega over here and we obtain J omega plus 5 over J omega plus 10. The next step is to compute the polar form of this complex number. To do that, we first need to compute the polar form of the complex number in the numerator and the polar form of the complex number in the denominator. The polar form of the complex number in the numerator is First of all, we need the modulus of our complex number and it's equal to square root of the real part squared, that is 5 squared, plus imaginary part squared. The imaginary part is omega and we need to square it. Then we have e to the power j and we need to compute the angle. The angle is the inverse tangent function or the arctan function where the argument of the arctan function is imaginary over real. And here it is. This is the polar form of the number in the numerator. Next we need to compute the polar form of the number in the denominator. Consequently, we need to write square root of, again, the modulus is real number squared plus imaginary part squared, multiplying e to the power j arctan of imaginary part over real. And here it is. Good, now we can continue. Our W of J omega is now. Let's see what we have over here. We have 25 plus omega squared and over here we have 100 plus omega squared. And we can group these two terms under the same root and write them like this. Square root of 25 plus omega squared and over here we will have 100 plus omega squared. Good. This thing has to be multiplied by E and we can group these two terms and we will have J multiplying arc 10 of omega over 5 minus arc 10 of omega over 10 and that's it. From here we can see that magnitude is the square root of 25 plus omega squared divided by 100 plus omega squared and we can see that the phase function is arc 10 of omega over 5, let's nicely write it down, and over here we'll have minus arc 10 of omega over 10, and this solves our problem. That's it. We have computed the magnitude and phase functions. Perfect.